Hello everybody, this is Hillcrest Games, and I've been getting a lot of comments recently saying, what's going on with Lepland? Uh, is it cancelled? Are you still working on it? When is it coming out? So I thought I'd just make a really quick little update video here and kind of show people what's been going on with the project. So about two years ago, um, the project was restarted. Um, initially, the idea was to create a very small little tech demo of a, of a 3D platformer, but uh, while working on that, I kind of realized, okay, there's actually something here. This is something that I would like to play, honestly. It's a product that I would like to... I would like to exist because I want to play it. Uh, so, I actually restarted and I have been taking a lot of time. Mind you, I'm not working on this full-time. Uh, this is a side project, however, I would like to start working on this full-time very soon. And it's something that I'm very excited about, to be honest. Um, so for about two years now, I've been working on the code base and polishing the mechanics and getting everything feeling just right, uh, as well as I've been learning new tools and new methods for creating levels both efficiently and effectively. So uh, Houdini has been the most important aspect of that. Uh, I've been learning how to use that software. It's a procedural modeling software, and what's so incredible about it is that you can uh, design your levels iteratively. So by that I mean... You can create Houdini assets, bring them into the game engine, and on the fly, you can reshape and reform and recombine your models into in very intricate ways and just get your level feeling exactly the way that you want. Um, and it's just really an incredible tool that I can't recommend enough. But uh, I'm just going to move along here, uh, make sure that my options are good. All right, so let's check out the testing toy box. And of course, the testing toy box is not a real level. It is um, basically a scene where I can bring in all the different mechanics and objects in the game, and I can make sure that they work properly in conjunction with each other. So for instance, uh, I have these things that I call the booms, And they are placed cactuses that explode on impact. And so you can use them for a multitude of different things. Of course, I needed to test and make sure that these bounce pads here work in conjunction with the booms. And so that's the kind of thing that this scene is for, making sure that the mechanics all work together. So let's go over some things. These potatoes are your way of getting health. They break apart and reveal parts for you. Uh, there are many different types of crates and, uh, and barrels. And treasure chests, where you can get coins and other collectibles. Uh, these bumpers are pretty fun. Different sized bumpers with different amounts of power. Bounce pads, of course. Oh, the spinning bounce pad, which I love. Oh, and also the cauldrons, which can launch you into new areas of maps. Uh, we have platforms that flip when you use your spin attack move. So there's lots of cool things you could do with this. Love those things. Okay, we have cogwheels that can pretty much do anything. Um, the game is programmed in such a way that I can pretty much interpolate any number of objects in any number of ways that I want uh, through these cogwheels, which is pretty interesting. Uh, of course, you got spike traps. I thought this was spinning. I'm not sure why it's not spinning. Never mind that part. Oh yeah, we have the shrinking platforms. We have different types of damage, so some of the particle effects aren't complete here, but we have fire damage, uh, electrical damage, and normal damage, of course. I need to get some health out of this uh, potato here. I'll break this one, too. The ledge climbing and hanging mechanics are reworked, uh, so that... Lep can shimmy along ledges. Uh, the animations are not final, I should make note. Um, 
I am not an artist and there's currently no artist involved in the project. So if you are an artist or you know an artist uh, who might be interested in joining this project, definitely let me know. Uh, that's something that I'm very much interested in. An artist is definitely something that I'm very interested in uh, getting on board this project. Of course, you got the classic uh, logs that can be pushed into the ground. Um, you've got the collect everything before the timer runs out puzzle. Let's just fail it. Oh, oh, let's try it again. Golden clovers are, of course, the main collectible in the game. Every level has very many of those. Oh, we got the treadmills. Now, for those of you who uh, are interested in the intricate details of 3D platformers, uh, that is definitely something that I'm very interested in. It was the whole purpose of creating this project is because there are so few games with the intricate kind of mechanical details that I just love about these types of games. And so I went to great lengths to incorporate as many of these features as I could. Uh, so for instance, there's velocity inheritance. So whether it's a moving platform or a treadmill, um, if you have a velocity and you jump, you will retain that velocity throughout your jump. Uh, another example with the treadmills is, of course, if you move from a treadmill to a non-treadmill, you will retain that extra speed. And there's a little bit of a different animation there when, uh, when Lep is running at a speed beyond his normal maximum where he kind of puts his arms back there. Uh, that's enemy... Well, I guess since since we triggered those enemies, we might as well talk about them before I get back to the moving platforms. Um, these are a few of the different enemy types. Uh, mostly simple stuff right now, but... Uh, if I get an artist on board, that would be very, very helpful for getting more interesting enemy types. This is the first kind of complex type of enemy that I've created so far. Where you can only damage him in the back, uh, and he will charge at you very quick. And of course he can crash into things, which gives you an opportunity to get, get that hit in on him. And uh, this guy currently takes three hits to finish off there. Boing. Uh, th this is some dynamic water that I'm testing out. Testing out the sort of the shader and the systems for these. Trying to get a very cool look. And you may be thinking, oh boy, I have a very cheap phone. Uh, how in the world is this going to run on my phone? Well, there are many different graphical options that change many different aspects of the game. So you'll notice that the, on the very lowest possible setting, the water looks very different than it did on the higher settings. So that's just something to keep in mind that um, I've gone to great lengths to make the quality settings do more than just lower texture resolutions and things like that. It actually has a significant difference on polygon counts and some of the underlying systems of the game uh, to allow it to run on all kinds of different uh, Android devices. And I shouldn't just say Android devices, but mobile devices. I'm just going to pump that back up for the video. Also, don't feel like having V-Sync on right now. Okay, there we go. Got sort of the heavier, toxic kind of water. The splashes aren't implemented, so even this lava has a water splash in it right now. But just kind of experimenting with different um, wave effects and seeing the water react to your character. Uh, I've also got these flipping platforms. So it's all kinds of different cool puzzles could be done with these. And of course these guys here too. 
may look familiar to people who have played other games in the genre. Woo. And of course, as I was talking about with Velocity Inheritance, anything that you're standing on, if you jump or you walk off the edge of that thing, you will inherit the velocity of what you're standing on. So, you just saw me get flinged up by that flipping platform there. That's uh, that's all part of it. Let's use this uh, woo this helicopter pad. And of course, uh, with the helicopter pad, if you land on the ground, uh, that ends that helicopter state for you. However, if you land on another bounce pad, you get to keep going, so uh, I plan on creating some very cool puzzles using this, where you can only get to certain select areas by making it to each bounce pad. <clears throat> I can't remember if I went over the cactabooms yet or not, but some things can only be destroyed by explosions. Uh, there are different types of damage in the game. Uh, we went over the fire, electricity, there's also acid damage and explosive damage. So these rocks, for instance, can only be hurt by explosive damage. <clears throat> Let's take a look at these moving platforms here. So like I said, there's velocity inheritance. So jumping on a moving platform, you retain the velocity from that platform. And same goes for vertical as well. Um, the first 3D platformer I saw with velocity inheritance like that was Super Mario Galaxy. Which is just a game that I just love. But uh, the mechanics of their velocity inheritance were so great. You, there were these full levels where you're on a moving platform and you're not... Uh, some games, you know, you're, you're on a moving platform and you jump and the platform moves away from underneath your feet and it's just not right. So that was very important to me to get that exactly, exactly right in every single use case. And of course that includes rotating platforms as well. Uh, I also have this rolling log here. Oop. And of course it's the same deal with that. <laughs> this is my experimental electricity effect, never mind that, I didn't mean for that to be there. That's what the testing toy box is all about, though. Alright, we went over a lot of the different stuff here. I'm just going to show off. This is a, a minecart ride that I started working on recently. Uh, there are no obstacles yet. But uh, the plan is for there to be, you know, minecarts with enemies coming towards you. Maybe parts of broken tracks, things like that. But this is another place where procedural mesh generation like Houdini comes in play. Where it's very fast to iterate on these tracks. And to automatically uh, generate them just by creating a simple spline, right? And so these minecart sections are something that um, I'll be able to reuse throughout the game as uh, the level design process goes on. So I'll just finish this up here. Alright. And yeah, that's uh, more or less it for the testing toy box. I guess we should move on and start showing some levels. Okay, the first level we're going to be showing today is Leprechaun Isle. Um, this is a level that is currently acting as a sort of tutorial level. Uh, none of these levels are quite complete yet, uh, but a, a few of them, including this one, are well on their way to being uh, complete levels. So, of course, this is where you learn the sort of controls here. So, in case you weren't aware, tiny presses barely make you jump, and holding the button will allow you to jump higher for better control. Of course, you have the spin attack, which can be used to damage enemies, damage uh, barrels and crates, spin cogwheels, and all sorts of different things. <clears throat> Most enemies can be damaged with a spin attack or by jumping on their heads. Of course we have the crouch button, which will allow you to crouch, it allows you to backflip, and if you're moving, it allows you to do a long jump.
And yes, there are many advanced maneuvers and combinations of moves. And the signposts will act as a optional tutorial for many things. If you are an expert at 3D platformer games, you will never need to read one of these signs. However, if you are not, they will be very helpful in uh, giving you some hints as to what kinds of combinations of moves you might want to use to get through different challenges. So this is the main area of Leprechaun Isle. Uh, it's meant to be sort of a carefree, happy place with a lot of open space where new players can get used to the controls. And so you might see, oh, I want some of those diamonds up there. Whoops. All right, so what does this guy have to say? Blumble. Stomp the four logs. First jump into the air, then press crouch to do a stomp. Make sure you land right on top of the log. Uh, and I will say in hindsight that the camera cutscene for this door opening is currently incomplete. Uh, so don't expect that to be a final thing here. This camera is going to be glitching around. There we go, yeah. It's going to look real good once the once I complete that cutscene. Let's check out this cave. Alright, better read the sign and see what's going on here. Ah, purple rings create purple coin challenges. Collect all of the purple coins before the timer runs out. Don't mind if I do. And like I said, this level's meant to be very easy. Um, just so that you have an opportunity to get used to the controls, see how Lep handles. Maybe have an opportunity to use some of the different moves. And of course, collect all those golden clovers so you can unlock more levels later. So let's move along here. You can swim in lakes and streams. Be careful of the sea, however, as the current is too strong and that's no good. <clears throat> currently, you can only swim on the surface, however, uh, one of the things that I'm currently working on is underwater swimming mechanics. So that will be coming very soon. Uh, let's see what this says. Spin the cogwheel by hitting them with a spin attack. Oh, typo there. Spin cog wheels, it's supposed to say. You never know what effects a cog wheel might have until you try them. Aha! Aha! So this cave is a work in progress, it's not quite complete yet. Aha! A treasure chest. Now, if I know video games, I know that that beam of light must be shining on something important. But we're going to leave it here for now. We're not going to spoil the last part of this level. We're going to move on to the next one. So this next level we're uh, looking at here is the Toxic Factory. Uh, if you've seen the old prototype videos, there was a an old prototype for a Toxic Factory. Uh, however, it has been completely redesigned and is much better now. All right, let's take a look at these slime enemies. So these guys are impervious to being jumped on. However, the smaller versions, when they break apart, are not impervious to that. 
Um, on my on my to-do list is allowing the smaller versions of the slimes to recombine into larger versions, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. Oh. Let's take a look at the interior section here. went there. That wouldn't have been good. Alright. This interior is a gauntlet. Make it to the top, you can do it. Alright. As I said before, none of the art is complete for these levels. Um, most of the art in the game is placeholder. However, one of the great things about Houdini assets, again, is that uh, the assets exist in the game, and as the logic for them is improved inside Houdini, uh, all of the different shapes and variations that I've created inside the game engine can be updated at the in the blink of an eye uh, if the assets themselves are improved inside Hunini, so it's the great thing about designing levels that way uh, with those procedural assets is that uh, if I get an artist on board who is competent with Houdini, they can make all of these Houdini assets look so much more beautiful at almost an instant. Alright, let's move along here. Don't you burp at me. <laughs> I don't know if I want to deal with this acid. I think I'll go this way. You guys have seen the, the purple coin challenge already. I'll just move along to the next section of the level. Of course, this level's not complete yet. Uh, there is going to be an alternate pathway that connects over here and is an alternate method to get to the large doorway that you see over there, which is to the sort of final linear section of this map. Uh, there is an end and a boss in this particular map. Uh, and there's sort of a gauntlet miniature interior linear section here uh, that leads to that boss. We're not going to spoil everything though. Here we go. Oh my, I don't want to deal with that electricity yet, so I'm going to check this place out. Mm -hmm. oh. Don't want to fall in. Just about screwed that up. All right. Now I forgot to put a teleporter that brings you back to the start of this section. So just pretend I jumped in a teleporter. 
And I'm not retraversing this because that would be bad game design. All right. Let's deal with some of this electricity now. Oh my. Can I make it? Can I make it? I can't make it! Oh. Oh. oh yeah. I think we're gonna leave it there for this level. And we're just going to take a very quick sneak peek at Chill Hill. Uh, which is the third level that's going to appear in the playable demo that is coming very soon. Just going to take a little look at the beginning of the level. Just a quick look around, just a glance. And so I sincerely thank everybody who, after all these years, is still commenting what's going on with Lepland. Uh, it really means a lot to me, and uh, in these hard times that we're in, it's really hard to find inspiration sometimes, but the, those comments really do it for me, so I really sincerely thank you for that. Uh, don't forget to put a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be showing a lot more in the very near future. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day. <laughs>